and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube with some Tri Region Singleton. We're going to be having some more fun. We had a lot of fun with the lab deck earlier. I guess it wasn't just a singular deck, but just, just playing the labs earlier. We had some fun playing three regions with Singleton, this event that they have going on. So I'm splitting up basically evenly, you know, as much as we can. We got 14, 13, 13 for our three regions, Bilgewater, Freljord, and Shadow Isles. And this deck's going to be just a, a good mid-range deck with just a bunch of good units and just trying to out-value opponents. Um, you know, there's basically just not too many bad cards throughout here. We got a couple of my, my favorite one-drops with Warden's Prey and Omenhawk. Parlay's going to be in here that can help us turn on uh, Plunder if we need it, playing it over Warning Shot, because it can also just be removal at different times, because we don't really need Plunder, but there's a couple of top-end cards that will use it. The two-mana slot, we got Arachnoid Horror, um, Averosen Sentry, Hired Gun, uh, Starlet Seer. We're not really focused on Starlet Seer, but it's just a good two-drop that even if you just get one or two extra plus one plus ones from it, it is worth it because it still has a good body at being a two-three. Um, over at, at three mana, um, Jaw Hunters, Callista, Misfortune, Monkey Idol, Petty Officer. You know, like these are all pretty decent cards. Monkey Idol can also uh, turn on the the plunder for us. Um, our first champions. I started with um, Elise in the deck but decided to kind of go a little bit bigger than Elise. Um, over at four mana, Babbling Beard, Chronicler of Ruin, Yordle Grifter, Zap Sprayfin, Twisted Fate, all, all great four mana cards. Yordle Grifter basically has a one third shot of getting the Allegiance Nav one, but still, even if it doesn't, it'll create the warning shot for us. And then you can see our, our interaction there. We've got some card advantage with the Salvage. Up at five mana on our curve, we got Averroes and Hearthguard, Razor Scale Hunter, and Thresh. With a Grass the Undying for removal. And then at six mana, we got our other our last two champions with Hecarim and Sejuani, both amazing champions. Um, and then seven mana, we got Shipwreck Order, we got Rekindler. And then this is where we need Plunder for either Riptide Rex or for Tusk Raider. Those are two Plunder cards. Then, of course, with a Harrowing and a Ruination at the top. So just good cards everywhere you know that's that's all that's the name of the game that's what we got we're just gonna play good cards and hopefully that good cards win it for us so yeah this this could be you know longer one yep because we're gonna be so this this video could be really short if we just go zero and two that would be bad or it could be really long if we go seven and zero because we're gonna be playing until we, either we win seven or lose two in a row Whichever happens first, we'll just mulligan five, eight, nine. Look at this good parlay. I just like taking down Bark Beast before something weird happens. I've only had one Bilgewater card so far, so that's good for our allegiance with Yordle Grifter. Hmm. It's pretty good. gonna draw two and see what we get. Alright, so I have my own Curse Keeper that I could have played and then Vile Feasted, but I'm gonna save the mana. I think we're gonna hit. Ah, uh, I thought we were gonna hit, because we... You know, like, <laughs> you know, we haven't seen Bilgewater cards. So I felt pretty good about hitting. Really? Okay. So that's one for their Callista. Going 
Going vi like obviously I can vile feast their spider link, but then my that spider can't block Callista anyway, so it's not. That's kind of risky of giving Callista another level up, and I don't think for very much payoff. Right, they're Demacia. <laughs> Alright, I guess that happens. By the strength of our convictions. Oh, Dawn Speakers. I don't know, Jacques, you can play, you can play kind of anything you want. Yeah, I think you should play, play your two best decks for your, for the tournament. Maybe that's Frostbite Midrange, maybe that's They Who Endure, maybe that's Twisted Swain. Those are certainly the three most popular, probably best performing decks right now. I think Ash Sejuani's favorite against everything. I think your question was, is, is Anivia Braum favorite against Ash Sejuani? I would say no. Mobilitic's data is starting to show that that maybe Twisted Swain is favored against Ash Sejuani. That that looks like one deck that actually maybe is according to Mobilitic's data. Them our teeth. Maybe this block should be the other way around. Crazy. Sejuani, Twisted Fate, and Callista. <laughs> this game's crazy. Stand and fight. I, mean, I feel like I have to kill Hecarim. I mean, this is Singleton. I probably shouldn't be that scared of Ruination. And Harrowing. It's our cards we're playing, of course, as well. Uh, I 
Ramp Stone. I have so many different champions in play. There you are. They're out there. Don't kill my champions, no. There's gonna be a lot of things dying for Thresh and Callista. Good for both of them. All right, I think we'll just see what happens here. I can protect. I can protect one of those for. I can protect one of those with elixir of iron. Thresh is right now at one, so this is going to be two, three, four, five. Minimum five. I guess minimum six. Yeah, so Thresh is going to be leveled up. Um. Which one do I protect? Sejuani hits harder, but is just going to die. Sejuani is at 3 out of 5. We're close to doing that. We're, we're probably just not going to level up Twisted Fate. We'll, we'll protect Sejuani. So that is 4 out of 5 now. Warning shot next turn can make it 5 out of 5 as far as level up goes. So we have Misfortune and Hecarim as champions that, that are able to be put into play with Thresh. Uh, this would get back Twisted Fate right now. Maybe I let Sejuani die and then try bringing it back. Our vengeance has burned long enough. Act now. Now we'll just sit back. Fortune favors the bold. Tilt. Something for Hecarim. How you doing? Callista has now seen three allies die. So now we have Misfortune and Twisted Fate that, that's half and half as far as Rekindler goes. Ruination is a card. I don't really have to put more things into it. Well, that's great with the Rekindler. It's also great with the Thresh. This means the Thresh is going to put in Hecarim. I mean, we, I just have so many great plays. What, what should I do? I guess I'll do this. This, this seems fun. Get 
Dang. Was that? I'm not sure what we're getting. You gotta believe me. Is it not oh, right, because we're gonna get an extra card there. Oh, I shouldn't have attacked with my babbling beard, so I can get the extra two two. I don't. I only have room for one two two, not both of them. Not today. <clears throat> okay. So we, so our Callista put Yordle Grifter into play, which Yordle Grifter nabbed a vengeance from them. <laughs> so that's pretty sweet. Alright, our deck's pretty awesome. <laughs> Callista Yordle Grifter deck. Yeah, won't won't be today, Lemon. It, I always it's never the same day with donation decks. It's always a couple of days down the road. I have um it'll probably be honestly it'll probably be Tuesday by the time I play your deck. Because tomorrow, tomorrow is um, rank up Sunday, and then the next, then Monday is meme tier Monday. It'll probably be Tuesday. Um, just takes takes a little bit of time, you know. I just have a you know like a list of donation decks to play. You are not the eighth donation deck that I have right now. Okay, next week on, on today? Okay, so next Saturday? Absolutely. Yeah, so if there's ever like a day that you want, a specific day you want me to play it, I definitely can. Um, so yeah, Saturday next week, um, first, second, third, or fourth, do you have a, a preference on which slot, first, second, third, or fourth? Third slot? All right. I'll write you down for Saturday, third slot. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, donation decks I always play, you know, like I, I don't play them that same day, but um, I always take any, if you ever have any kind of preference on day and time slot. It's very rare that I have somebody else like on that day time slot. Like right now I have two I have a second slot Monday, a third slot Monday. But those were the only ones. Y'all are probably thinking that I'm playing Curse Keeper in my deck. It's just we've played Warden Spray twice that have created Curse Keepers. Y'all are probably like, man, why is there Curse Keeper in this deck? Lure the Depths, Darkwater Scourge, and Salvage. Well, definitely glad I got rid of the Salvage. Like, even the Lure of the Depths also. Good things to get rid of. Could be vile feasting our own curse keeper to create the four three. I'd want to do that after Thresh is in play. I think. I'm just gonna be playing Babbling Beard this turn. Keep curving out with that. I guess the one problem with playing Babbling Beard right now is that it, there's a pretty good chance I just draw the enraged Yeti that we would just draw the next turn anyway. 
I guess it's still just draw a card. I could Vile Feast this thing and work for Thresh next turn. Let's do that. I can I can make a deck like that a Callista uh, Callista plus Yordle Grifter deck. We could do that. We could make a Callista Yordle Grifter deck. Yeah, Monkey Idol. That would definitely help level up Callista. You go Chronicler of Ruin also. Basically, maybe your Shadow Owls cards are just Callista and Chronicler of Ruin. Chronicle of Ruin killing Yordle Grifter gets you that that ability again. They're not doing very much over here. Just like sitting back and waiting to ruination or something. Like they did nothing last turn. You can play, you know, powder kegs and, and you know, because you're gonna be playing mostly all bilge water. So powder keg, make it rain. Like powder kegs dying also help level up Callista. Maybe play like a vengeance or two. Okay. I'm honestly not that worried about Ruination. Like, I still have all this good stuff. And we have a 4-3. And we also have the Salvage. Yeah, Callista Dreadway. Yeah, I put Dreadway in there. If you go go on Callista and Gangplank. Cast Salvage or Grasp the Undying. We go Grasp, we're probably going to Grasp Maokai so that then I challenge Maokai next turn with Thresh and kill Maokai. I don't know if killing Maokai is that important. It's probably not. So we'll just play Salvage. Challenge the thorny toad so the thorny toad can't die. You defile the grove. Right. 
Let's go in Tusk Raider. Double the power and health of the allies in my deck. Okay, maybe killing Maokai is important. Now that we got treasures in here. That's ever stopped me. Uh, somebody in chat may know the answer to that. I don't know how you adjust. The deck tracker deck list and stuff. Maybe it's so small because there's it's maybe so small because there's 40 or different cards. Maybe that's it. So maybe it's just kind of the sizing is wrong. I'm not sure. All right, so Malkai's out of here. That's good news. Look at their random cards. This is the <laughs> This is the deckless code. So do know the deckless code. We of course have our own ruination we can be cast in if we want. Keep playing that. That was a zero mana card, of course. Obviously, they don't have Noxion Guillotine in, in their decks. It's a Noxion, Noxious card, obviously. Get down to four mana. That was a very good treasure chest, for sure. That was a very good treasure chest. They still had their five cards um, that they had before that, didn't use. We're gonna be going with our one at six monkey Come idol. Good guys, but not that good. We have a one six monkey idol. I don't know, all three of these are good. How do we how do we play any of these cards? They're all good. So just do this one. I need more runs. <laughs> the loneliest Poro. Dang. Double for the next kill. My kind of party. I didn't wait for the last guillotine because it's just a little risky there if they don't play guillotine. Um, you know, we're in a lot of trouble if they don't play guillotine. That can be trouble.
<laughs> Playing attack with Ruination and Harrowing is like cheating. I only got three cards left. Thought about playing that, but then I decided no, because if they have their own Grasp of the Undying, we would need it. We would need that. They already played a Vile, Fe Vile Feast earlier and we're playing Singleton, so they're not going to have another one, but even if they did, we would respond with Vengeance. GG's. Um, okay, if you did not see the new cards, ignore yet. Yeah, no, I did. So about the Behold mechanic, does War Mother's Call count? Yes. Um, no, so it... it it's a 12 mana card. As far as I saw, Behold just counts any card that costs A plus mana. Is it, does it have to be a unit that costs A plus mana? War Mother's Call should count. I think it just said any, any card that costs A plus mana. Yeah, so it just has to be in your hand. Like once you play War Mother's Call, it won't count anymore. It has to be something in your hand or in play. I'm keeping these spells. I don't know what's going on here. Keep the spells. Yeah, so in play, like, on the board. So if you have, you know, a Trindamir on the board, then that will count for your Behold stuff. No, your, your War Mother's Call is not in play. No, it's in your hand. But Behold does say in your hand or in play. So the Behold counts cards that are in your hand. And that's... So the cards in your hand are not in play. But they still count towards Behold. So basically, I didn't want to risk losing all my mana. Obviously, I would have rather played the higher gun after, you know, I would have rather done the Fury of the North block and then play higher gun and have the higher gun hit the monkey idol. That would have been the best case scenario. But I had the six mana there. If I just, if I pass and try that, maybe they don't attack, maybe they pass back and I just waste all, all that mana. So we'll do this. Our Thresh can still challenge the O3 monkey idol, so we're still okay there. So hopefully that answers your qu question there, Krovax. Oh, 
Thresh, you're not supposed to be the vulnerable one. It's not supposed to be you, Thresh. We could use, like, Salvage, something like that that gets us some card draw. Okay, if you already played, then no. No, that would not count. No. Spells are never in play. The only thing they're in play are units. Like, on those are the things on the board. Spells are never in play. So if you play a spell, it's gone. It's just, you know, it's just gone from the game. It's not um, in play at all. In play are things you can see. So you can just think of it like that. If you can see the card and it costs eight, it's on, if it's on your side and you can see it and it costs eight, then you're good. Son of a Possible they have removal for Thresh. Possible they just wanted to get the attack um, for Misfortune to try to start leveling up Misfortune. It's a three region deck that does not have Ruination, <laughs> so don't have to worry about that card. Noxion Fervor. Kill Misfortune and Thresh. And that's the turn. Underwhelming hand. Kind of wish I didn't keep the flash freeze. Yeah, that's a great card. That's a good value card. I'll play that first. Hmm, I would have liked both of those. Anyway, but yeah. Coming in hot. Good value card. Sure about that? Nope. So I'm thinking like they're gonna misfortune block one of these and then I'm gonna brittle steal the misfortune. But it looks like we don't have to do that. Not done yet. Looks like we don't have to do that. They are not blocking with misfortune. No no. Avarez and Hearthguard's ready to wreck in. Yeah, that's true. Behold may make Leviathan and Riptide Rex even better. They're already, like, two of the very best units. They, they cost exactly eight. It's perfect for Behold. Didn't really see, to be honest, I didn't really see any of those Behold cards that are really that powerful. That, that are really worth playing, probably, honestly. But we, have, we probably haven't seen every single Behold card. They probably didn't just make a new keyword and it's just on like four commons or whatever. Kilbasa. We don't need to be doing that. Get 
I think we're gonna get at least one point of damage in with like this little spiderling or something. Can't play both Frost cards and Riptide Rex if we want. I'm gonna play this one and keep the 4 3 alive. I'll let the 7 2 die. I'm thinking we're about to be 3 0 whenever the opponent keeps playing. Alright. They did have that Nocturne Fervor. I was right about that one. Well, this is what the main event looks like. So we're bringing out the big guns, huh? Yes, we are. <laughs> Riptide Rex is so slow. So many cannons. And so loud. Alright, we are 3 and 0. Oh. Well, they wanted the big guns out for the main event. <laughs> so there we go. Are we going to get a seven win expedition? We'll see. Our deck's looking good so far. Just keep babbling, Beard. Warden's Prey is going to come in clutch of being able to play at turn one, have it die, get something else that we play on turn two or turn three. I feel like it's going to give us Averroes and Sentry. I think that's going to be the card we're going to hit with Warden's Prey this time. We got Curse Keeper the first two times. I stay two mana, but it's going to be Aperos in the Sentry. The they never stop. I gotta get out of here. Gotta get out of here. He screams as he's attacking. Get bloody. Alright, so we'll take three, and then our two drops will trade. Ow. I like it. We're curving out well. I don't like that. We're we playing Elixir of Iron? Yeah, we are. That card's busted. The good news is this go is going to keep vulnerable forever. So whenever we get to attack next, we'll have a Powder Monkey that will be challenging that thing. No, I want to battle feast. Keep them from drawing two. Hmm. Yep, we're playing Singleton. With the three region deck.
Alright, that's our second thing that has died for Callista. Then the monkey idol is about to die. And that will be a level up. Okay, Elmux with the with the new card, you think could be good? Oh, no, wrong way. So I could Fury of the North to protect, or I could Fury of the North that thing, but I don't feel like we need to do that. Is Powder Monkey the biggest thing that's died for me? No, Hired Gun is. <clears throat> Ooh, we're going to be putting in Hired Guns that are going to be giving... Yeah, you don't want to cross me. Yeah, take that Ancient Crocodile. We're going to put in Hired Guns. Bring me the call of That's a cool one to put in. World. So I played, I played that instead of Hearthguard because I wanted to keep f 4 mana for Fury of the North up. But now I don't, I don't think I need it. So I'm gonna just get rid of this thing. Dang. I was hoping they're gonna like black spear one of these two, so then we would put them into play. Of course, I can't challenge that right now, but now that's just going to have vulnerable forever, so moving forward, we'll, we'll be able to challenge that. You are safe with Brom. Bitter call. You'll make a fine totem. Yep, this is Singleton. Boys. I haven't focused too much on killing Braum yet. Tusk Raider. Tusk Raider. What are they doing over here besides nothing? Ice runs in our veins. I guess it's just nothing. The trap is set. All right, under ruination mana. So I need three of the seven to hit Braum. If I go Riptide Rex. Braum. That's the worst number possible. 
No, I guess, I mean, that puts Braum to eight. Kill Callista and level up Braum. I was gonna say that without the Fury of the North, I'd only put it to eight, and the only thing they'd be able to challenge to stay alive would have been a one-one. But This is, again, me not having Fury of the North available, which is kind of scary. So now those have stunned the Bat 3-3. Three, three. Okay, not game yet. Um, or is it, let's see. Let's see. So this challenge is this. They block the seven power. They're taking nine. So yeah. Um, I guess if they're going to be blocking the seven power. Wait, no, no, no. Because if I challenge here, then they block the four. They take three, four, five. Yes, yeah, so I got a challenge here. Okay. All right, and we're four and zero. Oh. Unless they have some kind of one mana spell, uh, I guess they could have. They could have brittle steel. Brittle steel would be a bummer. No brittle steel. Oh, and our warden's prey got us. The Yeti. It did not get us Avaros and Sentry, which was the card I was calling. It did get us a Freljord card, but it got us the Yeti. Gauntlets are a great way to get extra XP. You know, because you're getting your normal XP that you get for your wins, and then at the end you get all that bonus XP as well. If you're somebody who's trying to grind out cards, this is a great way to do it. Okay, this will be kind of interesting playing against a. Kind of more control deck. Uh, I like. I like both of these cards. Keep them. But it's okay. There we go. I was gonna say like we need to have our units to be able to curve out. Take from the rich, oh no. Dang. Check out the goods on this one. That hurts. Should have done more mulliganing. Time for a true display of skill.
and glimpse beyond it means they don't get the target with to help with Ezreal. I'm not greedy. My friends, though. We have hair. We made choices. And I'm keeping Elixir of Iron to be able to use with Thresh next turn. Like if they just go like thir if I go Thrash, they go Thermogenic Beam. We'd be able to save Thrash because they'd have seven mana. Firing. And Warring Shot will be good with this Tusk Raider later. If we challenge this Ezreal and we are successful and get rid of it, we don't have to worry about another Ezreal coming back, so I don't have to worry about their targeting or anything like that. Uh, it did not work. But we made them use a 4 mana spell. So that's good. Kind of weird that they they prefer to have their sergeant take two damage to save. I guess they're saving two life. They're not just saving one life. They are saving two life. They'd rather just have that that two damage go to the sergeant. Okay, that's that's reasonable. At first, I was thinking they just saved the one life because the powder monkey died it anyway. But then realized that um, it is really a saving two life. Yeah, they're doing Karma Ezreal in a Singleton. Dang, we're at four out of six. Elixir of Iron. Still great. Sorry, Thresh. Shipwreck Order is just too cool. I know I could have tried to save Thresh with like Chronicler of Ruin, get the health back up, but Vi stands for violence. with Shipwreck Order, you know, we put two treasures into the deck. I can kill it, revive it. We get two more treasures into the deck. This could be a great card in our Callista deck. Oh no, we drew the Sejuani. Now we don't now we're not gonna draw it from Tusk Raider. Ooh, another challenger. Hmm. So I guess they're probably going to kill that, and so I don't get enough more treasures. But we can get more treasures with Harrowing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you don't have a Thresh request. Play Gangplank if you don't have Thresh. Uh, that's Gangplank's good there. Uh, if you don't have Callista, we can replace that with Elise. That would work.
Oh, it won't even show me what this is going to do? Doesn't it usually show you what it's going to do? Okay, so we'd have Thresh. We'd have... Um, Chronicler of Ruin. We'd have that 7-5 that just died. We'd have Misfortune. And then probably, I think, Hired Gun, I think. That all sounds pretty good. I guess with the treasures, it doesn't show you. Oh, Yordle Grifter. Right. Sweet. Not Chronicler of Ruin? Why did we get Hired Gun over Chronicler of Ruin? Because I never played Chronicler of Ruin. It's still in my hand. Duh. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Sweet. Yordle Grifter, we stole Pursuit of Perfection. I don't want to steal that one. I want them to have that one. Give me a playable card. So the other copies should be vulnerable too, right? Because yeah, they're just exact copies, so they're vulnerable as well. Okay, so we're going to attack like this. We'll just drag these over to, well, let's see. Drag them over here, over here, over here. I guess, I guess the Thresh will hit for four, so it'll hit for more than, than these other ones. Which one's not ephemeral? That one? Okay, so that one's dying. This is gonna level up our Thresh to be, so if we get a Thresh back in future turns, it'll be leveled up. This one's the non ephemeral one. Yeah, we nabbed Catastrophe after our harrowing with our Yordle Grifter that came back with the harrowing. Oh, they're just dead. That's not as fun. I have so much stuff to do still. And I had three more treasures in my deck. And I doubled up all the power and health of allies in my deck. I didn't even get to draw any. I had so much cool stuff still. Alright, that's a 5-0. We're still going though. Let's get to 7. We got two more. We got 750 bonus XP. Okay, Ionia, Noxus, Shadow Isles. We're gonna be trying for the 7-0. That's the goal. What does he want from me? We level Sejuani, it comes right back. going with five champions. Kit giving us that luck. That's pretty nice. It's good fading memories. So I'm not playing anything this turn, but that two mana is going to be good spell mana for these two cards for later. Looks like 
they're going to be playing that on defense. Defense. Fortune favors the bold. If they would have just played this and attacked with it, I would have just blocked with my Warden's Prey, probably. And just let them trade. I mean, obviously theirs was going to die anyway, but so it basically been I could sacrifice my Warren's Prey to save one life. Which, maybe that's not actually worth it. Maybe it's good that I didn't, because they could have, like, a Zed. Blocking is hard. Difficult decision. Oh yeah, you're thinking, is that a hand? Or prankster art, is that a hand? Mayhaps. I'm sorry, Omen Hawk. I know you're cool, but I'm just curving out. The blade in the darkness. I just don't have time to play you. Do not deny me. I have many faces. Well, I'm sorry. You're getting denied. The dog. So you have to have like twin disciplines plus three. We have Elixir of Iron as well. So I should probably just go straight to attacking while they don't have any blockers. Even though Hearthguard is probably as good as anything that they are playing. They're probably not playing anything better than Hearthguard, I guess that's what I mean. I guess I don't want a, a living shadow coming down here for the misfortune. Alright, now we can play Omen Hawk. We can go Omen Hawk and Hearthguard and get double pumps. Double pumps. Yeah, Sejuani's bigger, but I'll just play Sejuani on offense. <laughs> Double pumped up Ruination. That's number that's attack number three with misfortune. We may actually level up misfortune next turn. It's possible. And of course I want so I want the overwhelm you know, Sejuani's not overwhelming here. I want the overwhelm uh, to happen um, against the smaller things. For 
All right, we got five more damage to deal. Or we can put this one in the wind column. You know, double pump, hired gun. So we don't get to play and draw a Sejuani. We don't have plunder enabled. But right now that card's doing a little bit of nothing. I like that. Not just the eyes, you know. Or a whole lot of nothing, I suppose. But there we go. Alright, 6-0. Oh. One more for the perfect run. One more for the perfect gauntlet run. We got 800 bonus XP right now. Here we go, final boss. Final boss time. Ooh, playing against an aggro deck. Noxus PNZ. A bunch of aggro stuff. We'll get rid of that. I guess we keep all these. I we consider mulliganing misfortune. I like how Jaw Hunters. I, mean, I guess Jaw Hunters is easy to kill, but I like how it can challenge some of these champions and take down like a Draven or a Jinx on its own. a chance that that gets us a two drop all right well that works Vision? For the money makers. Just leave me alone. Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> All right, not the best. In fact, the the worst one. The worst one out of 10, though, it's only a 10% chance that you get this card. And it's a free card anyway. Never lost a pair of I'm gonna go this route of goal card plus parlay. It's the safer way to take down Draven, where if I go Jaw Hunters and then they kill my Jaw Hunters, then I don't get to kill Draven. Um, also, if I go Jaw Hunters, then they get to strike and. Um, create another spinning axe. Raven down. So let's just do that to clear that up. I have my orders. Looks like trouble. Yeah, we may get more last breath units in the, the new expansion for sure. A good call, that could be something new that we get. Not sure what my instincts are telling me. It's not going to regenerate. The trap is set. Cut him down. Off. 
for that. So we'll have the, the Trapper trade with the Trifarian. I'm going to do two damage to the Vladimir. It's not, it doesn't regenerate yet. Um, make that so my Jaw Hunters can challenge and kill it. Uh, hopefully get the Enraged Yeti right here where I get to play both of those. Brittle Steel. So other option is, of course, playing Hecarim with Brittle Steel. Hecarim now does look more appealing. It, it just uses my mana a lot better. We'll play that over Jaw Hunters. Or I attack in. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. 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 So these are going to trade either way. May as well do it right now. They could cast the Spinning Axe to level up Vi. And take this damage. Man, Vi's so good. I, I thought... I thought there was a real good chance I was winning this, but Vi is something else. Okay. Good block for us. Great brittle steel. Okay, still feel pretty good. Still feel pretty good about winning this now. Again, just mana wise, it's so much it's so much better to play shipwreck order, but then that's the only thing I'm doing where I can play enraged yeti. And still have mana for Jaw Hunters. But it's kinda sad that that takes up my whole turn like that. Either way, like, it's not more health if I go with the Hoarders. So this does 3 to me, puts me to 10 for the Darius. And then we block, they have 5 Overwhelm. So I'm down to 5. And we take out both their champions. I guess with Spinning Axe could be 4. So we go down to 4. Oh no, we don't take out that champion, because that goes to 1 health. So what if I if I go here, we go to 6, so we take less damage. We keep our 5-3, but then that thing's a 10-6. It's hard to kill a 10-6. Um, going this route, my Jaw Hunters will be able to challenge and kill Darius. At least that's the hope. What makes a master player? Probably just uh, consistency and... Um, playing a lot um, and yeah so playing a lot so being very familiar with answers yeah like uh, and just just kind of familiar with you know everything just kind of being able to, to think turns ahead of, of how games going to play out and what you need to do to affect said game that of how it will play out Well, this is a this is a risk. Costa Cast won't die until the end of turn unless they block it in combat. No, I've never, no, I've never Shut done that. Yeah, this is what this is how I've always played the game is just about five hours a day or so uh, that I play here on stream. Go and harvest it. I 
needed them to block that thing. I needed it to die. For Rex. Looks like we're going to be six and one. That's too bad. Not a perfect run, almost. That Vi, and you know Vi into Darius. I was I felt great about that game until you know until Vi, and then I was a little worried, and then Darius. It's like oh no, that thing hits really hard. Uh, good game though. I need to. I went with the so, I went with the Twisted Fate Gold card into Parlay earlier to protect to kill the Draven. But if I would have, I think I needed to go Jaw Hunters that turn. If I would have gone Jaw Hunters, I would have been able to save both those cards. Twisted Fate Gold card would have been perfect against Darius later on, or you know, and Vi with stunning, and even as we saw there, like with the Darius with the one health. If I had that Parlay. That would have been perfect, you know, I would have been able to parlay, kill it, um, trigger the plunder, and then could have played Riptide Rex. So I think that that's the, the play that... Uh, I went with the safest way to kill Draven at the time, but it left me wide open to those other champions, where if I would have gone with a riskier play to kill Draven, I would have had better cards for the other champions. No, casting the playing the cask the turn before it it dies at the end of turn, so it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't give you plunder for the following turn. So no, that doesn't work. Very good game, very close, and not quite the seven win run for us, but still awesome deck. Definitely recommend this deck if you want to uh, you know if you want to try out the Singleton Gauntlet. This is a fun one to play. I'd say the worst card in the deck is probably the Tusk Raider. That, that one's probably unnecessary. There's lots of like top end cards that maybe would be better than Tusk Raider. Like maybe the um, uh, the Shadow Isles, eight mana, seven, five fear or some that if you have something die, you play it, you kill two other things. That could be maybe better than Tusk Raider. I don't know. Tusk Raider is, this is a, a very high variance card. Like there's gonna be times like, like basically Playing Tusk Raider and then drawing a 10-12 Sejuani just wins games. And so, like, that's why it's in here, because it, it has that opportunity to win games. Yeah, Rasa. There's just tons of great top end, though. Um, I wouldn't really recommend Ledros, I don't think. I think that Ledros is a little unnecessary. Like, we don't really have, like, the burn and stuff to help finish out with Ledros. I don't think you need Ledros, but... Anyway, um, this deck's very good. And that was a lot of fun. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button. Hope y'all enjoyed watching the Singleton. You know, kind of had a little bit of a switch up here on this Saturday. We played a lab, played a gauntlet. Um, you know, got to play some of the other formats today. Hope hope y'all enjoyed that uh, little change of pace I did there. All right, but thank you so much for watching some uh, Singleton, some Tri-Region Singleton. And I'll see you for the next video.